So uh, the inspiration was my father because he's very actively involved in social welfare. So okay. during the times of COVID, he started this COVID center where uh, it was a free COVID center where uh, we had oxygen and everything. So I handled the digital marketing for the center wow. where everyone mm-hmm. is aware of that, and that that led me to think that it is something that I want to do because I feel very happy seeing people get you know better and coming out of the center. It made me feel that you know it made me introspect into myself and see that it is actually something that I really want to do. Hello and welcome. Thank you for stopping by this wonderful platform of called Say Something with Mads, where every week, every Saturday, in fact, we have a youth who has come to this channel, who has come to this platform to share their journey with us. Their journeys are inspiring. Their thoughts are um, a very, very creative, I must say, and that's the energy I get every week from my interviewees to go on with the interviews week after week. I hope you are enjoying this channel as much as I'm bringing it to you. So today I have a young 15 year old, uh, Samriddhi Sharma. She is joining me from Punjab. Let's welcome Samriddhi. Samriddhi, welcome to my channel. Say something with Mads. How are you feeling today? I am doing great, ma'am. How are you? It's such an it's a, such an honor to be on your channel and tell my story and share my story with youth. Absolutely. So, uh, before we start about Samriddhi, I must tell that uh, Samriddhi uh, started uh, an NGO called Guzarish, and when I was going through her website, I was just um, blown awake what can a young people do at this age we have so many things to ask so many things to talk about today so straight away over to you Samriddhi first of all let us know a little bit about your journey your childhood your schooling about your parents about your siblings about what is your core value who Samriddhi is over to you thank you so much for such a warm welcome about my family. So uh, I live in a joint family in Zirakpur. Zirakpur is a very small place considering uh, its neighbors like Mohali and Chandigarh being. But I, I see like my father's contribution to the economical hub and its growth is very founding and, you know, very motivating. Uh, moreover, uh, I have like most of my brothers are right now abroad studying for their undergraduation and graduation. And I was born on 24th of October, 2007, which is something, which is kind of something that uh, increased my interest in diplomacy since 24th October is United Nations Day. So I feel like I was meant to go into that field and into diplomacy. And I'm also a proud founder of Guzari Foundation. Right. And... Uh, that's a very, very, uh, very unique introduction. Your date of birth matches with your passion. Something great. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So let's uh, start about from the childhood. Let's say when you were in grade six or seven. Now you're in grade 11. What kind of child you were at that time? Uh, to be very honest, if I had this interview like four years back, I would not have uttered a word. Because, you know, being such an introvert back then, I, 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 I mean, I was not an introvert. I would not call myself an introvert. But uh, I was one of those people who did not like putting forward their opinions to everyone. Because I used to have this fear of getting judged. And, but now that I've uh, started going, attending MUNs, and it has passionately changed my life, you know, mm-hmm. uh, knowing a lot more. Because I used to always have this thing that if you do not know, if you do not know something fully, you should not talk about it too. Since, you know, that okay. half knowledge is bad knowledge thing. So, yeah, so uh, that's that's how I was four years back. And yeah, so many young people, when they are on my channel, they may, they do mention about MUN. I think MUN um is has created so many future leaders small or big but they have broken the uh, you know the uh, the hesitation to speak uh, in a uh, in a friendly environment with the students they have i think many many people have been motivated by mun and i must acknowledge that the wonderful work mun has doing other than uh, about knowing about the global yeah certainly 
Mm -hmm. also about breaking the hesitation part and talking in front of public so let me ask you straight forward um let's say when you were in school did anyone inspire you did anyone at home inspire you who would you consider your hero or idol in this kind of area where you are working right now um my hero i would consider my mother i mean i know it sounds very cliche but she had has a you know huge impact on my life she taught right. me the value of being kind to people who, who were like you know not even kind to us to so like to be kind to everyone and also she has this carefree personality that she's she's that poo from kabhi khushi kabhi gaon dar i am apni khud ki favorite hu she she has that personality and i love that about her she's very carefree and she's always been my hero my idol she uh, she's an actually uh, so we have this conflict going on between us like who founded the name gozarish like who decided the name gozarish since uh, she believes it was her and i have a different memory of it i feel like i was the one who founded it but yeah there's like okay. a lot she's very supportive of me and so yeah. great so many of uh, you don't have to search for heroes outside if you have one yeah. in your home and what better to mother to be your hero and idol so exactly. i'm sure she will be very happy to hear this uh, let me again ask you this because many people many young people uh, think of doing a lot but they don't actually get to do because of the effect of school system education uh, exams they never get the time or they never think of doing it but i see a lot of these uh, social work ngos coming from the city of punjab uh, especially mohali around chandigarh i have a lot of girls who have interviewed is this something which inspired you what inspired you what is that incident uh, or what is that yeah. which okay you uh-huh. that i must start and uh, how did you start let's start from the beginning from the first thought yeah. so uh, the inspiration was my father because he is very actively involved in social welfare So okay. during the times of covid he started this covid center where uh, it was a free covid center where uh, we had oxygen and everything so i handled the digital marketing for the center wow. where everyone mm-hmm. is aware of that and that that led me to think that it is something that i want to do because i feel very happy seeing people get you know better in coming out of the center it made me feel that you know it made me introspect into myself and see that it is actually something like that i really want to do and then uh then i somehow connected with the mun circuit and then i got into the mun's which uh you know it me realize that when there is will there is always a way so that's how that's how i you know that's how i thought about gazarish and that's how we me my father my mother my brother he is very supportive of it now he's in america he's studying for uh, he's doing his undergraduation so okay. he was very supportive of it everyone in my family is very supportive since they have this key we should help people and so yeah hmm. i feel like, hmm. like my family has always been supportive and my father yeah, is my inspiration was, uh right when i was going through the your website i saw a lot of pictures of uh, uh, the support which you um, the donation and the support which you gave for the nepal earthquake so that is yeah. a lot so um tell me how did it start and who are the people who gathered and uh, if this, this was a natural calamity which happened far away from your city even in the next even in a neighboring country to send things from uh, uh, punjab to nepal there are a lot of logistics involved lot of things involved so how mm-hmm. did you manage to do that so i i i would like to start by saying so i have a friend in nepal she and i we we connected over linkedin and reddit okay. and we we used to we used to have these study sessions for our sat and oh. like oh, i i dropped her a message i heard about the nepal thing and i dropped her a message and she did not reply for like till like next morning and i asked her what is up are you okay is everything okay mm-hmm. there and she's like no so she she was not there in the jajakot area which was like 
uh, hugely affected uh, but she her family and her friends were there and she told me that you know it is very difficult to send stuff there like there are get humanitarian aid is coming from india there's a lot coming from india but the thing is that um, you know the roads are blocked with the earthquake there's a lot of so stones and stuff there so i was like mm. is there any way we could help and then we and then we came up with the idea to send a truck full of aid from india to nepal we we collaborated with uh, a few local ngos so savitri charitable trust we collaborated with them rotary club and a few other clubs we collaborated with them we uh, sent sanitary napkins food water bottles and whatever we could we sent there we sent blankets like you know we so somehow i feel like god has a very big thing to play when you have to do something So somehow we connected with an activist in Nepal. He he's very okay. famous in the circuit there. Yeah, his name is Navraj Bora. He's also called Veda because he he helps a lot of animals there. He has a, his own organization. So we connected with him and he helped us a lot. He was the one who uh, told us about the map from where we should send it, which border, oh. how are we supposed to send it? Yeah, exactly. And I was like, uh, I I feel like you know. there's always one person that comes out of nowhere and helps you do such an amazing thing so he was the one who helped us a lot and then there was avas he was the one who connected us with the activist oh, so okay yeah it was a, it was a huge circuit it required a lot of manpower and a yes. lot of you know uh, resources but we were able to do it and i'm very happy we could help a neighboring country absolutely and that you have to do it quickly mm-hmm. not like after a exactly. after a few months mm-hmm. so that instantly instantly you did it so like we sent the uh uh-huh. yeah we sent the truck in like next 5 days only so we thought about it and in next 3 4 days we sent the truck to nepalgans border from there it got collected by the activists and then wow. we for the distributed it yeah that must must have been such a big shot in the arm for guzarish like it was locally doing things but now you have actually mm-hmm. sent it across the border and uh, amazing amazing great work so tell me in this journey when you started which year you started the guzarish uh 2021 so it took, it got registered like in 2022 but we found it in 2021 okay yeah so since then now and now next 5 years you are in grade 11 and uh, do you plan to go abroad and study like your brother um i'm confused about it as of now since like you know seeing gazarish grow i have this feeling to stay back home and do a more on it but my father says that you could also work on the foundation in america too but i feel like you know this certainly a group that i have here a mm. community of volunteers that i have here and the support that i have so i'm still I conflicted about you are that the uh, part yeah. the cross pay cause we're thinking yeah. one so it's it's very mm. natural you are very young and uh, there will be a lot of opportunity but you don't want to let go of this momentum which you have gathered exactly. right now mm-hmm. so when when or if you are going you are going to uh, apply abroad what is your area of study what would be your um yeah are you a, are you an economics yeah, uh, yeah. Student, psychology science what so uh, i am one of those political philosophy and international relation person so uh, i have this huge interest in philosophy i i i was recently reading a book by plato called the republic so i just have this thing that you know you should have a wider respect of your life so you should know more about what is not just going outside but inside too and i feel mm-hmm. like philosophy connects with me but uh, moreover international relations also connects with me so i'm going to i was planning on doing my major in international relations and my minor in philosophy right what a lovely combination right so are we talking to a future diplomat oh <laughs> yeah you could say so hopefully <laughs> because the kind of work you're doing and then at such a young age when you have decided that you are going to do international relation um the, uh, the the you can go and do wonders in that area so uh working for two years since last two years was guzarish and i saw the kind of work you are doing continuously tell me 
what would you say you your biggest challenges have been name two to three challenges which you faced and also how you're balancing your studies with this uh, how much time you give so a lot of questions thrown at you you can take one at a time so tell me how you're balancing your studies and also what are the challenges and how you overcame them okay so first i'll tell you about the challenges that i faced um so the biggest challenge that i faced is when like considering the fact that most of my volunteers are youth and like you know everyone has their academic uh, work and their commitments so it is very difficult to find time about uh, like you know to yeah. find time and balance the academics and the commitments and personal schedules with the volunteers but we have we somehow planned a perfect uh, a day and a time so that everyone has this time and that is that is the time when we decide all the initiatives and all the things that we are going to do and it's like a zoom meeting that we have and there we decide everything so yeah we 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 did tackle it but it was very difficult to tackle and this and next year it's going to be 12th so it's going to exactly. be more challenging uh-huh. and yeah. who drives all the sessions you do you start everything uh, it's, it's your initiative every time so uh, no maybe- no so i <laughs> so i feel like Uh, I have seen like you know most people around because I feel like that is something you know people should have their own leadership skills too. So in my organization, I prefer that everyone takes up a uh, initiative that they like and then they can you know leader it like they can become the leader of it. Ah, uh, so most of my initiatives have been ah uh, have been dri- uh, driven by a lot of people. There's a lot of human power in it, man power in it, and. like the meetings are set up by a different head of department and i okay. i try to i try to add as much as i can in the group and yeah it's not like just me doing the work it's a lot mm-hmm. of people doing it mm mm-hmm. um what if uh, you have to uh, say yes as you said you're empowering people are going to be very important as because maybe you are not there some day you are outside mm-hmm. uh, of your country and somebody else taking it up and moving forward exactly <laughs> so yeah so tell me in this journey what would you say is your has been your biggest strength and what is it that one of your limitations which you want to overcome throughout this journey of your school balancing everything what is your biggest strength so my biggest strength is that i am very now after the mu's i'm very good at communicating with people i connect with people and i make them connect with me i it's like i the you know interact with me freely and that is some of my biggest strengths i consider my biggest strengths because uh, it has it has like it has somehow given birth to gazarish uh, having like now having 80 volunteers in the organization and handling oh, 80 them volunteers is very chaotic wow. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so communication skills play a lot a huge part in it and uh, my weakness i would say uh, so my it's, it's about a uh, habit of keeping everything perfect and the keeping the enthusiasm high so i i really feel very bad when the like when i'm very enthusiastic towards something and the other person is not interacting in the same way i i i, I really get very frustrated i i have to rethink is it me am i am i doing something wrong there or why is the not the same amount of enthusiasm not coming why we when i'm giving it back so that could be my weakness i i do get frustrated about it all right that that's a very uh, unique thing like yeah you you want people to be at your level but it cannot be like all the time that you know, exactly uh, yeah but it, i do have to understand that huh? yeah true right um what is it that will make that okay the 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 question would be what is it that makes samruddhi happy truly happy what will that be if i give you uh, uh, that option that tell me what makes samruddhi happy in one line what would that be so there are like you know there are two things that make me happy first of all it's the time i spend with my brothers i i okay. live in a joint family and and like i'm the only girl in my family and all my brothers they like the time i spend with them the games the board games they 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 truly wow. make me happy and and the and my organization because uh, i feel like my organization is my family is part of my family and 
it's it's something that i created myself so uh, doing yeah. something in it uh, going for drives uh, there's a lot going on and then it, it just makes me realize just make me hit that it is something that does truly make me happy Mm. there are not uh, not any moment when you say oh it's too much and what am i doing uh, it, it's too much of a headache or maybe i have taken a lot which uh, it, is there sometimes a moment like this comes so I, i do have this habit of taking a lot up so like you know but it it ha- somehow makes me do my work better so like if i have a mm. lot of work to do I have this habit of making a to-do list, and then I'm like, I prioritize my work, and then then I somehow I try to come out of it because obviously you you always always expect something high of yourself, but you can always not come up to your expectations. So you have to get over those points too. And mm. uh, I I feel like you know uh, having a to I am very one of those people who have this to-do list everywhere. So I have a board mm. back there, and I write my all my things that I do back there, and then I also have. flash cards and stuff that i post around my room so it just keeps wow. on giving me the motivation that i have to do this also this also and right. I, when i have my work my like my brain filled with work now that is when i start doing the work actually so mm. so you know yeah many people work very very well when they are the finishing line i mean at the towards the end when your deadlines come and then you give your best so great exactly uh, i have to ask you because it was coming to my mind and i think i missed asking you i saw a post on your on your uh, um insta account where you have created a mon- a yearly uh, to do monthly list but january you do this feb you do this i found it very fascinating what is the idea behind that what are you trying to do by putting those ideas uh, putting those to do um, themes <laughs> every yeah, yeah, yeah. month Tell me so, about it. Okay, so I yeah, so uh, in Gazarish we like I this is something new that I came up with this year only. I tried to make a you know your monthly things. So, like if I was born in October, I would do social justice. If you were born in November, you would do something else that's written on the thing. So it's like a a, a way to like you know motivate people to do good stuff and. some of i feel like some of people relate more to when it is something personal that that is being connected them with so uh, it's my birth month and this is written on it so i should do this so this i was trying yeah. to motivate people into doing something Absolutely. through and you did motivate yeah. me out of all the things that stuck with me so i think that's an amazing thing i might also use it uh, in some way or other that's a great Open, month yeah. uh, that's a great i was looking okay january this is my birthday month what am i supposed to do that Yeah, exactly. I must, yeah. I must applaud you. The idea is fantastic, and yeah, it gives a bit of a impetus, a push, like do something mm-hmm. at least mm-hmm. in your on your birthday month. So that that's amazing. That's uh, very very good. Um, yeah. So tell me, you also uh, I read somewhere that you like designing your own websites. You are a designer. You love doing your own. um a creative uh, work and a digital create mm-hmm. you are a digital person and you started so how did you learn this and uh, do you handle all your creatives on your own how do you manage so much samriti you are doing meetings you are studying you are also managing the websites so tell me how this this love for uh, design uh, how did it come about so oh, uh, i did a not an internship i actually connected with a uh, technology company called cotegra technology okay where i helped design a web, uh, where i helped design a website so i gave ideas for the website it's called electron which is it's an electoral management system Mm-hmm. so we came up with the ideas and then i saw that it is something that connects a lot of people so i tried using canva i tried using so once the foundation was made i tried using canva i learned a little i did a little mm-hmm. youtube search and i saw how to how to make posts for instagram and once i started making it the process made me realize how fun it was and how creative it was so yeah. plus also the fact that you know Uh, uh, my nature of not bossing people around. So my volunteers do will like you know they do wish to uh, make posts and I do let them make it. But I have this habit that you know I find it very ch- challenging to ask someone to change something more than twice. So mm, which is why right. uh, which is yeah. So which is why I I 
I thought that okay, Instagram posts are going to be with me. In reels and other stuff, some made by the volunteers, but yeah, the post is made by me. Agree, totally. Like it's it's very frustrating to uh, actually communicate your real need yeah. to a second person who doesn't know you well, and we have to that communication takes a lot of time. And if you know it yourself, nothing like it. I have to constantly keep in touch and con- because video editing is a different altogether, a very different skill set which uh, I think Canva and all mm-hmm. we can manage, but uh, video editing and it is very frustrating to tell somebody what yeah, your exactly. vision mm-hmm. vision is. So great, you are you have a lot on your plate and you're managing everything beautifully. So um, then this is something which I want to ask you personally. Uh, is if your education system in your education system I want to know this from every youth basically what is it one thing that you think that should change like it's high time 2023 and still we are stuck in some old format what would that one thing be if you want to remove something or change something Mm -hmm. that's like that is one of the best questions that I've heard so far like you know from a lot of people they ask me about my organization but my trust in po- policy and my trust in uh, so there's this new education policy coming up you I might I, I think you might have heard about it also and I feel like you know in the old education policy in India there's a lot of this ratifying wala things you have to learn a lot of things you have to like you know uh, see which thing is like you know learn things which are not even important so I feel like uh, this should be something that I'm done. Like, you know, why do we have to read about stuff which uh, do not actually help us? Like in any agricultural way? Have practices more of India. Skills. So many chapters. But uh, let me interrupt yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. There. There are like, I am interested. Uh, huh. Huh. But the portions have been cut down like anything. They have, they have removed so many good chapters, so many chapters which we need to, uh, children to know about. What do you have to say about that? Simply... Uh, deleting a portion is it making somebody's life easier is the system changing so like i remember in 10th there's the chapter called periodic table it was there last year like it was there three years back i I, am not sure but it was not there in my 10th board and i feel like people who want to do non med it is the base foundation of the people who want to do je or who want to go into the science fields and cutting a major in chapter and cutting the concepts which are actually useful and then rather mm. doing the concepts which are not really important for us is something that should be changed and also uh, the, uh, the our education policy and our education should be made more skill based more practical because uh, you know CBSC it's more about reading and more, more about mm. ratifying stuff which I feel like should be changed it's high time now with the CBSC, if you go out to see uh, the question paper, they try to include so many skill-based questions. Um, uh, what is it called? The case studies, uh, yeah. Case, case studies, studies like assumption like, reasoning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, reasoning. Um, but then the but then the classroom. Well, it's not helping. You know, I feel like huh? yeah, yeah, exactly. Still very, still I mean, I mean, you can change the uh, form that you can do a lot of things with the. Uh, you know, the board and the education in India because making it more practical, making kids actually enjoy studying is one of the toughest things to do. But it is mm. something if it is done, it could change India in a very, it would, you know, impact India in a very nice way. What are your subjects right now? So I have economics, I have uh, political science, math, painting, English and uh, computer science, IP. Okay, right. Yeah. Great combination. But yeah, as you said, more practical. Everyone says this. We need to be um, more outside, uh, no, no, more of classroom studies. Yeah, move out, yeah. go out. I think everyone looks forward to, that's why everyone looks forward to man so much. The learning which doesn't happen mm-hmm. in class happens there. So about history, mm-hmm. geography, whatever. A lot of things of geography happens in man. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Samriddhi, I'll, I'll not uh, say that I started this with some big um, uh, agenda to help people. It was more for me 
to connect to youth. I wanted to know. I am not looking at make, making a big promises, tall promises that, okay, I will change this, I will change that. For me, connecting one youth at a time and knowing what is going on in their mind? What are they thinking? What are I am? I miss teaching. I have been teaching for twenty six years. I miss miss my students' interaction. So, but this has opened a world to me. Now, I not only in a classroom you can teach Indian students of a particular state only twenty five to thirty students. Here, I have spoken to global youth. So, I think it's a very yeah started it with a very selfish reason, but opportunity started coming that I want to know what the youth is going on, what they are doing. And this is the platform I want to talk to them. How else? Start a channel, call them, give them the opportunity. They, I learn from them every day after the interview. I have I have a note. Uh, no, I sit with a notepad. What did I learn from Samriti? What are the things she said? What are her quotes? What is a book she read? So for each one, it's enriching me. And I think if this conversation is enriching someone, that's something which is uh, for the world to decide. But mm -hmm. uh, this is how I started. And I hope uh, that this grows into a very big youth platform. Like some something yeah, people exactly. inspired. And it's, it's such a great opportunity for us youths. Like, you know, it's such a great platform for us youth to talk about what we do. And also to talk about what we believe in. And thanks for giving us such a great opportunity. Such a platform. It's uh, truly inspiring. Thank plus, you so much, Samriddhi. Plus, the um, way you talk in your nature, and it's, it's thank very, you so much. Uh, it's amazing. I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it means a lot. It means a lot when you are saying this. Um, also, uh, yes, um, when we do this, we don't know what the future holds for us, but we keep on pushing and keep on doing just like Certainly. you are doing for mm -hmm. Guzarish. Well, I am doing it for this. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone, you are so young, so the world is um, still very, very open and very, very um, opportunity a galore for you to uh, move ahead. So, how would you like to end this interview with who Samriddhi is, your values, or maybe a quote, or maybe a song if you can sing something which is your favorite tune which you have always something which how you want to end this interview this has been a beautiful conversation let's end it uh, with something very interesting or something which is samriddhi okay so i'm very bad at singing but uh, to end this conversation i mean it's been such an amazing conversation and i want to end it on a very nice note too uh <laughs> This was a quote that I also quoted before also that you know this is a well uh that quote always helped me out a lot. It is something that my brother also texted me yesterday. He texted me it me to me in a very uh very important way. Like uh, he tried to make me realize that you know you you have to do something that you you have to look forward to something to do it. 